but if you're doing something that's more linear, then you can present lore a different way. Okay. Like maybe diary entries along the way that are in locations you have to stop at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you're doing like games like like World of Warcraft, for instance, the lore is kind of just set dressing at that point, and that can be okay too. So Alex, you don't remember what the lore of Total Pebble Knockdown is? I didn't think we established lore aside from that one time that you thought a total party kill was a total pebble lockdown. Oh, so you do know the entire lore. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> great. Uh, so recently on this show, we had talked about the problem with lore dumps. Uh, you had made mention of a lot of these long exposition pieces that go into establishing the lore of the world that has a tendency to take you out of the experience it uh it ruins pacing we thought that uh under the advice of crave that we should talk a little bit about the lore dumps that are good the ones that are more integral or important to the game itself and how they introduce those the one that she mentioned specifically was about outer wilds yes okay. we have been watching uh, a youtuber do a let's play as you will, mm -hmm. of uh, the Outer Wilds. And just, I know you, you've played a bit of it yes. yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't played it, but the entire thing is pretty much, you know, you're trying to solve this mystery of what's going on. Uh, and you get all the lore that kind of informs, like, it's not just the lore. Mm -hmm. Like, it does tell a bit of story and background, but also sure. tells you reasons that things are the way they are. And points you in directions on where to go and what to do to, you know, figure out these puzzles and these mystery bits, you know? Right, right. Uh, so the structure of Outer Wilds, from what I can remember, is that your entire solar system is on a 24-minute time loop. Mm -hmm. What you need to do in that 24 minutes is explore this clockwork world that is doomed. <laughs> to keep repeating the, the heat death of the, the entire system. In that, you have a bunch of different planets that you can explore, and you basically need to work out what happened that led to this so that you can fix it. I don't know if you do fix it at the end. I'm assuming you get to. Maybe. Who knows? I haven't gotten there yet. No spoilers here. I mean, it'd be kind of odd if that wasn't the point, but I think it's either that you are able to stop the loops... Or that you're able to stop the catastrophe that, that causes the loops, but one yeah. of those two things. Um, the key here is that the stuff that you actually do in the world does not hold when you start the loop over again. Right. But what you learn about the lore, all of your notes that you take, like that information is stored yeah, so your you, ship's log will be updated right you have all of that information and you can utilize that information in the future to to do things and you can take that information and hopefully use it as clues to solve the various puzzles that are around the universe and so hopefully if you can get enough of that you're able to do everything that you need to do on each piece of this a solar system in the 24 minute period in order to solve the puzzle. You could technically solve that problem too by just trial and erroring your way through it and just like maybe muddling I, I don't know honestly because I feel like the lore that they give you and the writings that they provide you mm. which are all the right uh, the writings of these uh, the ancient aliens as it were that aren't there, and it's just the writings from what's happened, and you're kind of doing, like, space archaeology. Yes. You're checking out all these these writings, and, like, you're learning stuff about the, these people, but also the past of your solar system and what happened, and how to get around, for instance. Oh, yeah. There is uh, one part, I think if you go to the gas giant, not even a gas giant, it's a water world. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Deep. Yeah, the one where you have the giant anglerfish that keeps eating you. Oh, no, that's the Dark Bramble. That's the Dark Bramble, yeah. 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 That one's fun. That one's got pocket dimensions among uh, upon pocket dimensions. 
Yeah, I didn't get to that part, but I, I hear it was fun. I mostly I mostly just ended up out of my ship, and then the, the giant anglerfish came and ate me. So, yeah, they do that. Yeah, they um, do. The ocean planet. Now. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the storms that are constantly yeah, going around. Yep. The tornadoes. Yep. Mild spoiler for a couple-year-old game it's, now. It's wild, yeah. That one is, there's like five cyclones going around, tor mm -hmm. twisters going around. If you fly into it, they toss you up out of the atmosphere. Through the writings, you learn something, and through doing going to one of the places there, you learn that uh, four of these are rotating clockwise, and the oh. fifth one is rotating counterclockwise. Mm. And you can use the counterclockwise one to get pushed down underneath the current that is blocking you from getting to the planet's core. Oh, okay. Which, okay. without writing, like, without that bit of information, you could still do it. Yeah, but it, it would require yeah. <laughs> a lot of trial and error. Right, you'd have, to, you'd have to be incredibly observant to happen to notice that that was the case. Like, you'd, you'd yeah. stare at that for a little bit and just try to figure that out. The written logs are integral to the experience in general, but also to help you through the game. Another example of learning things through the writing mm -hmm. is, uh, did you ever observe the quantum moon? No. So there's a quantum moon. Okay. It appears around one of five locations and a mystery sixth location mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, it's only there when you observe it. And when oh. you look away and turn back, it's no longer there. Oh, okay. It moves somewhere else. And you can spot it then. But there's um, a place that teaches you a bit about the quantum stuff. Did you see the quantum shards at all? Maybe? I don't really remember. Shh. There are these rocks, and if you look away from them, they move. Right? Oh, oh okay. Okay, yeah. So one of the things that the, they teach you there is that uh, if you're standing on it, you can transport. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. So what you what you do is you stand on it if you're in like a cavern and you have to like turn your flashlight off so you're in darkness and when you turn the light back on you're somewhere else. Oh, okay. I think I did do that part. Yeah. 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 And then the quantum moon. Uh, one of the things they teach you when you're learning about the quantum stuff is that um, taking a picture of something preserves it being looked at. An image of a quantum object is just like looking at a quantum object, which is mm -hmm. really neat. So, yeah. like, if you take a picture of the quantum moon, it'll stay, and you can land on it. Sure. But these are things that you would have to try, and think about trying, and not understand that the game is going to let you get away with this. But with right. the writing there, it's like, you're going through the logs of these, uh, you know, these long-dead aliens who have already done this, and figured right. this out. So you're sifting through their research notes, and going, oh shit. This is how you do that? Okay. And it makes it so that that organic storytelling of the lore being everything about this game becomes fundamental to learning how to do this game in a way that makes sense and is fun and interesting and just like a natural progression of exploration. Sure, sure. To a lesser degree, I have seen a lot of places where they'll do audio logs or notes that will have codes to doors or something like that that you might need to progress or sometimes even passphrases that otherwise you would not be able to get to the next part with. Uh, there are also some times where you will have to observe objects and turn them around in order to discover what's on them. I think Tomb Raider did that. Um, and uh, although I, I think I did give Morrowind a lot of crap in the uh, last lore dump one that we did, what it did do right was that there are literal directions in the uh, logs that you have that may, in that framework, be the only way you can actually find stuff in the game. <laughs> Yeah, old, older games, uh, quest logs, didn't have map pings and stuff like they do now and waypoints. There were no you know, old, or markers. old school World of Warcraft, you had to read the quest to know where the hell you were supposed to go. Yeah, you gotta actually do the thing, you gotta read the directions to get where you need to go. Which, uh, which is, which is fun, it's immersive, and, uh, I like it to a point. 
Yes. If that's what I want in the game, but I think definitely where gaming is now, it's like I'd prefer to just like have a, a, a waypoint or a quest marker or something. That being said, actually, uh, you know how I mentioned Dishonored in the first segment? Well, uh, yes. Dishonored, as an immersive sim, has a multitude of different ways that you can go about uh, dealing with your, you know, target as as it's as it is uh now for every single one of those targets you can actually take them out directly or you can find a non-lethal way that's probably a fate worse than death anyway uh for the for the people that you are targeting in each chapter now a lot of the ways that you find out how you can do that uh is through a lot of these pages uh like there is indeed like a clockwork world in the second one where the in inventor of it has some, like, scraps around that kind of explain to you the ins and outs of how this place was designed, and more importantly, the machine that you can utilize in order to uh, neutralize him without, you know, having to, to go and kill him. Uh, you learn a lot about the world itself and some of the, the things that you can do inside of it through that exposition. You open up new possibilities for how you're going to do things or how you can accomplish a task by looking through those records. I was gonna spend a little time talking about, like, the walking sims and the narrative games, the only thing is, is that a lot of the exposition in those is directly tied to the narrative framework, and you kind of have to go through it in order for the game to progress. Yeah. Um, but they'll they'll just tell you in while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little <laughs> just, different than than like the Outer Wilds, where you're actually just exploring and the, the what they're telling you is informing like how you're going to play the game. Right. And like so, it's less linear in that fashion it's it is 100 right. more an exploration right because if i were to take a game like dear esther the voiceover parts where you're hearing the uh the the notes that were written to esther do not inform you about how to play the game because you're always going to be walking in the same direction anyway the narrative itself is kind of the game so it doesn't really enhance the experience, it just was the experience to begin with. There are audio logs that I have seen in different games, and usually I can tell if they're going to be any kind of good is if I have to stop and wait to listen to them, because I'm worried that they're going to cut off before another character starts talking. Mm. I, was, I was just playing a little bit of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, and that, like most Borderlands games, has the audio recorders that are around, and some of them are kind of funny. Some of them are kind of kind of witty or whatever in the, in the dungeons that might inform some of the characters that you meet. And I started listening to one, and I'm just kind of going about my little quest, and it cuts off right before the end because one of the characters chimes in. <laughs> <laughs> to tell me that I'm doing a really good job or something. It's yeah, like, thanks thanks for that voice, Bark. I was listening to something. I've started to realize, especially in modern games, um, that, uh, yeah, you have to be careful of how far in one direction you go because you're probably going to trigger somebody else talking in your ear, which just completely yeah. overrides the audio logs. Please make sure to keep a backup of those logs if I ever needed to talk to them. I remember in Fallout, uh, where, you know, you would actually get the audio logs and you could go back into your notes and you could listen to them while you're actually going around the world in the places where people were not going to run up to you and say, hey, I got a quest for you. <laughs> what do you think is the, uh, the best way to integrate your lore into the gameplay of a game? I think it would really depend on what your game is focused on. If you're doing a full-on exploration and mystery-solving game, uh, something like what The Outer Wilds does would work really well. Because mm. it gets you interested in the lore and also helps inform how you play the game. Yes. But if you're doing something that's more linear, then you can present lore a different way. Okay. Like maybe diary entries along the way that are in locations you have to stop at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you're doing like games like like World of Warcraft, for instance, the lore is kind of just set dressing at that point, and that can be okay too, but make it accessible. Getting a quest from lore, or getting like a location in the lore where you can go, and you wouldn't know this is there otherwise, like the treasure maps in Skyrim. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, the treasure maps in Skyrim, or it's even like... in Assassin's <clears throat> Creed, a lot of those will have the treasure maps for, like, uh, Black Flag, a rogue, where you're going around those islands, and they're the only ways you, that you find the, uh, the treasure. Something like yeah. that's fine, those aren't even really heavy with lore, but it's just, like, something you have to interact with and, like, pay attention to. Right, uh, there are quests like the Dead Money expansion, where you have to specifically tune into a radio station... Uh, in order to to find out about the uh, uh, the casino, you know, and, and that leads you on the quest. That's a, a whole other expansion to to the game. As long as it enhances the experience, I don't mind. Uh, the problem that I think we were addressing in the first one is when you have a wall of text presented to you that has really nothing to do that's going to transcend the experience you were already going to have in the game. If I'm just going along my game, and then I see this giant wall of text, and it doesn't change anything about how I'm addressing the game, then that wall of text for me in that moment was pointless. Right. It, it didn't do anything, and I probably didn't read it uh, in the first place. And then if it turns out that it was important, uh, I just saw a wall of text. So, <laughs> right. uh, so trying to keep things moving while you're giving that lore is really important, and uh, trying to make it a little bit more bite-sized and make it meaningful to the actual play experience. When we were talking about Outer Wilds, uh, Outer Wilds is one of those games where those lore pieces are directly related to how you're going to address the game, and that's right. why it works in that case. Mm -hmm. But boy, it does not take long for that to get too heavy-handed. <laughs> if anyone has some examples of the best or worst examples that you can give about lore dumps, please let us know uh, either by our Discord channel, which is public, or you can leave comments down below.